This is fabulous. I can't believe this. This is just great. We've been coming down here to the beach and the plant, as Sophia said, for 16 bloody years. And, uh, you know, we've never had a crowd like this. We've never had this kind of energy here. There's 500,000 of you efforts out there. Everybody remember that line? And another 100,000 stuck in traffic on the New York Thruway. Bring back a memory for anybody? Not yet. Okay, did you young people here read about Woodstock in school? Okay, it's like two generations ago, okay? Your parents weren't even there, your grandparents were there. And it rained, and they took off their clothes. It was horrible. I, you know, why am I making such bad jokes? I just want to reference that time period, Woodstock. We knew some things during the Woodstock era. You know, like burning fossil fuels was destroying the earth. But we didn't know what we know today. We didn't, well, the Cuyahoga River caught fire. We created Earth Day. Nixon, Nixon created the Environmental Protection Agency. Nixon! Just to give you some frame of reference for what we're up against today. You know, and, and for 45 years we've been trying to mitigate the burning of fossil fuels. It can't be done. It took two generations to figure it out. And I think of like Nelson Mandela. He went to Robben Island for one generation, one and a half, maybe two. It took a whole generation of young people in South Africa to come up and say, we can't fix apartheid. It's got to go. And they went to work and they took it apart. And the young people did it. And I want to salute the young people that are here today who get it, who, ha who have the vision, who know that these economic systems that we're facing cannot be fixed. A few months ago, a few months ago, a couple of young guys, heroes, got out in the bay here, Mount Hope Bay, where they now catch tropical fish on occasion, you know, for a lot of reasons. And, and they had a, a lobster boat. And they kind of tried to block the, uh, the coal barge coming in. It's gonna, it's gonna take stuff like that to move these people. Yeah. And they had a banner on the boat. And the banner said, coal is stupid. <laughs> and you know, after that, some of the people, some people I know came through and they said, Dave, I can't be part of this thing that where you use a word like stupid. That's too strident. Stupid is a strident word. I go back to Woodstock, you know, around that time I was a kid. On Sunday night they get Martin Luther King on TV. I, you know, every seemed like every Sunday night. You remember the TV? I had to turn the channel and walk over there, you know? change the channel, there's no remote there. I know, you guys don't know, you know? But, they get Martin Luther King on TV and they go, you know, we noticed some problems with segregation, but aren't you being a little strident? You know, they said, and it's gonna take strident to take this apart. It's gonna take a generation of young people. When I think about Martin Luther King, it was a lot of young people who showed up in buses and the communities they went into weren't very happy and the police weren't very happy. And you know the reason what I think the young people have figured out today is that segregation, apartheid, and burning fossil fuels are all economic systems. And you can't mitigate them. They have to be ended. They have to end now. Just a little reference on the word stupid. <laughs> About seven years ago, I, I, I would draw your attention to that big, uh, what would we call it, a monolith over there. It's part of the breaking point that, you know, this whole coal reservation, they're doing all this stuff in proximity to this play yard here and the Wilbur School and this whole community 
So there it is, right there. That's that's my example of stupid. Yeah. That building was built for millions of dollars, and the governor came down, and the local dignitaries, and they cut the ribbon on it about seven years ago, and I was sitting about three rows back, and I thought, well, the purpose of that building was to get the carbon dioxide out of coal, okay? Right? They're going to take the carbon dioxide out of the coal, and they're probably going to mix it with the goop from fracking, and they were going to bury it where nobody would ever see it or hear from it again for at least six months. <laughs> the building's closed. The sci it was a science. It was an experiment, a science experiment. The scientists have moved on to the next public relations campaign. And I sat in the third row and I thought, this is wicked stupid. Wicked. Thank you. Yeah. Wicked. And we all say, wicked stupid. Wicked, wicked stupid. stupid. Holy stupid. Holy stupid. I have one more example of how stupid coal is. And irreparable. You can't mitigate the coal system. In the paper this week, along with some awful pictures of the police. Um, <laughs> gosh, I'm, I'm scared. Um, I'm making too many jokes. I gotta give the bloody speech. Okay. In the newspaper this week, they were talking about Brayton Point spending a billion dollars to mitigate the pollution from the plant. Back in Woodstock, we thought we could do that. Thought it would work. You can't mitigate this stuff. They spent a billion dollars. You know how many molecules of carbon they've, they've addressed with that billion dollars? Zero. That's right, zero. You can't mitigate the economic system of burning fossil fuels. And one more point. The news out of Washington horrifies me. But here's, here's a little item that I stumbled across somewhere. The fossil fuel industry basically gets an EBT card from the federal government of the United States annually, they, they click it up electronically, for $22 trillion annually. $22 trillion EBT card for all the fossil fuels. What do they do? Where do they spend that money? They go around the world and they destroy environments to dig up poisonous substances to truck them and ship them and put them on trains and bring them around the world and bring them to neighborhoods like Brayton Point. And then they burn them here in, in neighborhoods like this. And, the and the, uh, to great profit. And that bottom line, that money that they're making stands in direct opposition direct opposition to all life. We can't mitigate these systems. They have to be taken apart. I submit, I'm getting a high sign. This generation of young people that organize this today, they have a mandate, they have a destiny, and it is to replace this economic system. Go to work, thank you.